The high school baseball season is in full swing as the first week of the Georgia Dugout Club Tournament at Lake Point Sports absolutely delivered. Welcome into Three Cuts. I'm Corey McCartney, along with PBR Georgia Scouting Director Phil Kerber. Phil, good to have you in. Well, thanks for having me. I'm excited to talk about this past weekend. It was a loaded event, just like last year, and it was a lot of fun to be out there. So the format here, three topics, trends, players, games, whatever it is that caught your attention, this is our Three Cuts each week. And this one, all about the Georgia Dugout Club Tournament. Uh, your first cut, I know, Phil, about a ridiculous group of teams with three schools that were ranked in the PBR Georgia Power 25. Yeah, I'm, I'm going to call this one the group of death because it had number two, North Paulding, number five, Carrollton, number six, Blessed Trinity, and Locust Grove, who is a very talented team themselves. And these four teams just battled it out. I mean, some of the scorelines might not reflect it, but these were very close games that were contested throughout the entire time. I mean, we, you know, I think the highlights of the entire group was probably Saturday night where we had back-to-back -back games of North Paulding versus Carrollton and then Carrollton versus Blessed Trinity. And I mean, that North Paulding versus Carrollton game was a packed crowd there. It was awesome to see because I mean, high school baseball is back and we got fans in the stands and everything. And it was an intense game. Uh, Bear Madliak with a huge home run in the sixth inning to put him up eight to four with a, a massive bat flip. I think if uh, you follow anybody, either of our social media accounts, you've seen that bat flip. It was it was pretty awesome to see in person. And then Carrollton knocks off Blessed Trinity Saturday night in a one nothing game, which was I mean, Jake Lanky out there 2023 20, for Blessed Trinity going to Georgia. He was dealing for four innings opposite of him for Carrollton was Colton Cosper, a Mercer commit who absolute masterful performance seven innings shutout ball against a really talented blessed trinity team i mean that whole group was just it was a pleasure to watch them battle it out all weekend yeah bears bat flip was absolutely epic now as we move on and number two i know as a former pitcher you were salivating over a number of arms that we could see drafted in this summer's mlb draft yeah there's um I don't have, well, I mean, we'll start with Houston County, which has two of the top arms in the state and Brody Chestnut and Coleman Willis. And there was a crowd of scouts for both of their starts. Chestnut, a Florida State commit, Willis, a Georgia commit. And both were very sharp uh, to begin their outings. You know, Willis was cruised through the first two innings up to 93 with a nice curveball. And it was funny enough, right after I put out a tweet on him, things kind of got a little shaky. And, you know, it's funny how that happens. But third inning kind of lost some command and, uh, had to go to the bullpen, but those first two innings, he looked really good. And then Chestnut, he's a strike thrower, low effort guy, was I think up to 91 and found a uh, feel for the curveball later in the game. You know, the first two innings, it wasn't really working, but once it started to work, you started to see flashes of what makes him such a prized prospect. And then for Blessed Trinity, we had DJ Radke, Georgia commit, guy that we've been, we've gotten familiar with over the past uh, couple months, really. And yeah, we, we've known about him for a while, but we've gotten an up-close look at him recently, and he's looking better and better. A low 90s arm, really pounds his own, swing and miss breaking ball that he had working for him on uh, Friday night in their victory. And then Alatuna's Logan McGuire, another guy that had scouts uh, on him in his start against, I believe it was Savannah Christian. Another guy that's low 90s, good feel for his curveball, you know, low effort, he, um, Georgia Tech commit. Another guy that we'll be keeping an eye on ourselves. And then finally, you know, the last arm, Carrollton Samuel Simpson, the South Carolina commit, who, you know, another guy was, I think, up to 91 and had some really nice breaking balls that he threw to North Paulding. I mean, there were some, uh, if you go look at the video, there's some nasty swing and misses that he was getting on the top, on the top of their order, which is, you know, a pretty competitive order. Well, I know that Radke did not get that win against North Paulding, but after that game, uh, North Paulding coach uh, Dennis Jordan just uh, could not say enough about the, the way Radke pitched and them going against a really tough arm to open things up in that uh, tournament. Finally, for your third cut, uh, run down some of the high-level underclassmen that really grabbed your attention this weekend. Yeah, you know, I'm going to take a route of some of the uh, less-known guys that are uncommitted. You know, we had some really talented underclass guys like Connor Cripps, Georgia commit, Lanky I mentioned. Justice Haynes of Blessed Trinity, but I wanted to show some, give some attention to some of these guys that some people might not know about. You know, we'll start out with Sequoia right-handed pitcher Adam Brooks of 2022. This was my first time seeing him actually ever hearing the name up to 89 on uh, Saturday night. And he actually came in in a tough situation against West Hall. Sequoia's, I think, had given up five runs to the first two innings. And he comes in the third and throws 
shut out ball for the rest of the game and keeps them in the game. You know, it was really, it was impressive to see him come into that situation and have that sort of poise and be able to throw strikes, you know, three pitches, curveball, change of fastball, everything had going for him. It's a nice looking arm. Uh, second guy is a 2024 out of Harrison. It's somebody that it's a name that I had heard before and was excited to finally have our staff see in person. That's Tate Strickland, right-handed pitcher. He was up to 86, 2,600 spin on his curveball. You know, really promising young arm that uh, it's going to be one to watch and follow from Harrison. And Cooper Davidson from Fellowship Christian. Now, he was smacking the ball around Saturday. I think uh, I forgot who they were playing, but and inside the park home run as well as a home run over uh, to the pull side. So there's some power and whip there, and uh, he's going to be a, an outfielder that is going to be one to watch for sure. And then Al has got two really high-level uh, uncommitted underclassmen. 2022 William Mosley, real big, stocky kid, had a ton of power in the bat, as well as you know, great arm defensively, catcher, third baseman, can pitch a little bit. And then Ethan Sutton, who's just a massive 2023, and he's you know, 6'3", 6'4", really physical kid. He was up to 87 on the mound and you know, could swing a powerful right-handed stick as well. He's going to be a guy that I think is going to have a lot of attention on him this spring. Uh, and then we go to Houston County's Andrew Dunford, who really set the tone for them at the beginning of the tournament in their very first game, very first at bat, hitting out of the four hole. And it's a loaded Houston County team. So seeing the 2023 in Dunford hitting in the four hole, that says a lot about his abilities at the plate. Anyway, he's six foot seven, like 220 pounds. So he's got a, pretty physical frame and just absolutely smoked a line drive. I mean, I didn't think it was going to get out, but the way he stepped out of the box, he knew it was gone. Did a little bat flip, got a little swing of the arm in as he runs the bases. It was a fun one to watch uh, him do his thing, both as a two-way player. Uh, then we keep going to Creekview, the 2023 Nico Neverez, um, a guy that we had heard a little bit about that he had added some strength in the off season and that there was a velo jump and he comes out, it's 82, 84, touching 85, you know, with a 75, 77 slider. So he looks like another arm that uh, coming out of Creek view that could show some promise. Um, and then North Springs, Jake Streeter guy that we loved last year, at the George Dial club, he kind of, he had a big offensive weekend there and seems like he picked up right where he left off there this year. And he, you know, was, smacking extra bases hits all over the park. He's a big physical kid. Uh, we know him as a third baseman mostly, but he caught this weekend because the North Springs starting catcher, Daniel Jackson, who had a broken foot. So Street has got some versatility being a catcher or a third baseman. He's got the arm to handle it, and the swing is looking pretty nice early in the season. And then uh, <clears throat> Savannah Christian. Now, this was a, a really, uh, I don't want to say, pesky might not be the right word, but they're a gritty team. You know, they came up at small school facing Alatoona, St. Pius, and they got a young lineup that uh, it was impressive how they competed, especially against Alatoona. You know, a guy like Dagan Strickland, uh, Josh Gates, Eli Brown, they were all top the order bats for Savannah Christian that took some competitive ABs against a, some good Alatoona pitching. Eli Brown really stood out for me. He has, He was on the bump that game up to 82, but – was mixing speeds, mixing his arm angles, everything, kind of just throwing everything in there to get this the talented Alatuna lineup, you know, out front. And he it was working. He had them to, I think, one run through five innings. It was a really impressive. And he was doing it with the bat too, kind of a slappy line drive type hitter hitting out of the leadoff spot. And I think he's going to be a guy that we'll definitely have our eye on. And then finally, we got uh, Zachary Harris out of Cambridge, a right-handed pitcher, also quarterback. He was an arm that like another one that we really liked early last year, just, you know, works from this low three quarter slot, ton of life on his fastball and then has a nice curveball slurve and a slider deal that just drops out. Uh, he was up to 90 this weekend, which, you know, that's a nice little velo jump. I think we saw him up to 86, 87 last year, and he's definitely a high follow arm in that 22 class. Well, he is Phil Kerber and you can give him a follow on Twitter at Phil Kerber PBR and follow PBR Georgia Twitter while you're at it as well. Phil, appreciate the knowledge as always. Thanks for having me on.